In the last five to 10 years, vintage snowbill collecting has exploded. Guys all across the snow belt are finding old sleds and digging them out of barns and restoring them. Now a lot of guys like to collect the rare stuff, you know, the one to 100 stuff or the few vintage race sleds that they find. But we found a guy, Tom Rowland, at his Articat dealership in Ogilvy, Minnesota, that collects the one of ones. Like the very first Firecat, or perhaps a prototype IFS sled that nobody has ever seen, even the old Articat race trailer. Let's go check it out. Ah, it works. Beer time. So the 82, the Articat went out of business. Yep. And the, obviously they're building the prototypes yep. for the following the, year to get photos. They had a full stuff, line right? of sleds mostly ready to release. And uh, yeah, most of them made it out uh, to the photo shoots and you know, 20, 30, 82 prototypes just kind of got sold off to the wind. And uh, uh, we've been able to find a surprising amount of them, actually, maybe half of them are accounted for. I don't own them all, but uh, some fellow collectors do and such. And uh, yeah, kind of a neat little survival. Uh, we joke about it sometimes when we do find one sitting in a barn or it surfaces somewhere, there might be four or five, 6,000 miles on it. And uh, it's interesting that something that was put together just uh, just for engineering or, or uh, photo purposes uh, went on to, to be right. used that much. But yeah, this is an actual 66 Panther. Not too many of them were around. Yeah, I mean those. Oh, that thing, that thing would have Roger Skimes fingerprints all, all over, over it, it, I'm sure, yeah. Um, I think they made 21 of them. This is possibly one of the earliest UTVs as we know it. Arctic Cat uh, and Edgar Hattin hand built that. And in physical size, it's not that much different than some of our UTVs today. Pretty capable machine, and when, uh, when the term gets tossed around something might have been ahead of its time, I always think of this because it, it's not that different from what we have fun with today. I had the shocked reservoir mount on top of the... Yeah, isn't that uh, odd? <laughs> That's one of the things we find interesting. Yeah, some of the ideas that are shown on there um, did eventually make their way further into the industry, maybe on other brands too, and other things never made it never a step it. further, and it, and it almost seems like for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> let's go find, we should go find some of those. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Here's a, a lot where the machines are in for our service department. These are either done waiting to be picked up or uh, or maybe they're waiting to be fixed. I think people forget. We get so focused on new sleds. Yeah. Like new, new, new that you could drive a 10, 15, 20 year old sled. That's right. And have just as and much just fun. Just as much fun. Yeah. And, and there's not obviously the, need for the, the brand manufacturers new one. want to sell a new one. You sure. want to sell a new one. <laughs> that's right. Right. Yeah. When, they're, when they're done with these old ones, yeah, we're here still with get the on new ones. Them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we're always glad to have uh, the service, no matter what age the machine might be. I like this one. Big, uh, big. I stand up when I ride. Yeah, tail draggers like you. That's perfect for you, Pat. <laughs> I think it needs more riser. I think it does, yeah. <laughs> you know, when we're talking about the stuff that comes in for service, I'm reminded of this 1964 Arctic Cat that a gentleman brought in here this autumn. He's owned he this. He actually to get service? He did, believe it or not. He's owned this thing since 1974. He didn't get it brand new. Got it in some uh, trade. I think he said he got it for $25 in 1974, and his kids rode it for a decade. And he's not really looking for a full restoration on it, but he wants it uh, up and running, get some seats on it, get the lights working, and uh, get it ready for the next generation. Wow. I thought that was cool. Needs more riser. <laughs> this is Mabel. When we were little, she would pull us on sleds before we had snowmobiles. <laughs> wow. That's, That's how long we played in the winter. <laughs> That's a lot of ponies. <laughs> yeah. wow, is this considered a one horse or is this a half horse? Half horse. Half horse. <laughs> uh -oh. Boy, I just about didn't get to go snowmobiling. <laughs> How's that, Phil? 
<laughs> Head in, let's take a look. Here's where a lot of the 1982 prototypes that Pat was asking me about. Here's one of their examples of a direct drive model, no chain case. I think that uh, other manufacturers had uh, spent some time on direct drive back in the early 80s as well. Hey, it's Spitfire and the Flare yeah. Star. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But they never manufactured direct drive. No, right, that, that. right yeah, thing. just in these prototypes, the Puma, the Jag had it. Yeah, we, uh, we're always looking for anything that shares Arctic Cat history. We found an opportunity some years ago when this trailer was being sold by Arctic Cat. Uh, it looks like a, uh, just simply an old storage trailer, which it has been. But back in the 70s and part of the 80s, that was the trailer that served as the the team hauler for the Snow Pro race team. Oh, really? The uh, Bob Elsners, the Jim Dimmermans, uh, those are the guys that raced out of that and it, it surely needs a restoration and that is being talked about uh, actually as we speak. I'm eager to show this to you, Pat. It's, uh, it's a 1979 Transtar and it is one of the legitimate old Arctic Enterprises truck. I can't say for a fact that this is the truck that pulled that race trailer, but it's certainly just like it. Um, old Arctic uh, Enterprises insignia on it. And uh, much like the trailer, it does run, it does go down the road, but it surely is awaiting a, a good restoration. Pretty, uh, pretty basic truck by today's standards, but I'm sure in 1979 it was the, the king of the road. That Look to that trailer restored would be. That would be fun to pull into else. Lake Geneva with that, wouldn't it? <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah.